Hey guys, Sky Quadi here. Just got done test flying my latest five inch build. I call this the budget friendly neighborhood Spidey five inch build. And I say budget because most uh, DJI quads are coming in close to 400, 400 plus. And uh, yeah, this one was about 307 with the components that I used. And that's without the receiver, with whatever receiver you decide to use, I decided to use Crossfire TBS only. So it brings it up to about uh, 328 to 330, depending on where you buy. So anyway, I'm gonna start off first off uh, with the weight because the weight is pretty impressive to have a, a DJI system in here, a Cadex Vista system in here on a five inch quad. It's coming in at 325, 326 without props. And depending on what props you're gonna use, it's always gonna be different, right? So these Gem Fan, what are these called? Gem Fan uh, 51433s, that's a weird number. They flew pretty smooth. And they're coming out to 341 grams total. So not bad, in my opinion, for a five inch quad with a uh, HD DJI system. So let me get that out of the way and go over the what and the whys I did what I did. So starting out with the why, why did I build instead of buy? Well, I like knowing what happens when my parts break and I like building things to my specifications and basically what I, my main specification believe it or not was I wanted a frame that had wide arms and the reason is is because I've been seeing where I fly guys with five inch quads with the toothpick style replaceable arms breaking all the time and even my uh, Nazgul 5 has some thin arms too not as thick uh, width wise excuse me and one of those arms snap too so when I'm seeing these guys at the park, they fly forever, it seems, and knock and hit everything possible with these wider arms, and they're coming out unscathed. They're just replacing components, but not their frames. So I'm deciding to go with the squished uh, budget Martian frame that I found on Amazon. It was like $27.99. Uh, there's a caveat to this, though, because this frame was not designed for a DJI Air Unit or nor a Cadex Vista, but as you can see, the Cadex Vista fits fine in the back, but in the front, the camera does not. And what does Scott do? Yes, he did it again, guys, with his Gorilla Glue <laughs> in the front. Uh, so I do like, I'm, I am a big fan of uh, hot glue because whatever you need mounted, it can do it. And there's that literally no mount in the front. It is just the hot glue. And I also made a 3D printed mount in the front, a protector in the front. So when this crashes like it did do today uh the camera stays put and i put that on a lot of my quads and you might say that's not gonna last i'm here to tell you i have hit and fallen and had uh, fail safes from very very high areas and the air unit or the sorry, the cadex vista has not fallen out with glue uh, it's kept its it's kept its mount and it's been perfect so just doesn't look great i think that part of it looks ugly but this works and i really like this squish frame because i don't know i like the squish frame so and it and when it was, i was able to get it to come in like i said really light and at 330 to 340 grams uh it makes the transition from flying three inch to five inch very smooth it's uh it, it flies and handles very similar to my three inches except uh, I get a longer flight times and the batteries that I use to get those flight times you can get this Poway 1500 milliamp on Amazon and they are going for like $15 so I picked up uh, I think three or four of them and I got some 1500 uh, milliamp uh, China Law Behind black batteries and these got it close to seven minutes of flight time. So uh, I didn't want to go 6S either because I already own a 6S quad, right? And the batteries that I've been using, if they're not 6S, they get drained so quick. Then so a 4S battery on it or even a 5S battery on it gets drained to only three minutes flight time. So having a 4S build in my opinion, at my skill level and comfort level right now, it's perfectly fine. It's enough. It's all I need to do and practice freestyle and get the long distance or mid range distance and just have a great time flying. Um, the motors that I used or that I got were the Zing 2306 2450 kV motors. And then you can pick them up right now on 
Amazon for 63 for all four of them. So I thought that was a great deal too. So if you can get your hands on, they're very smooth, very smooth motors, not very notchy at all. And they look sick. I love the way they look. And let's see, going around to the back, of course, I use the uh, TBS Crossfire and the L with the L shape, just like uh, Mr. Steel has, and it gives me the range that I need. I, I really don't need to go farther than a quarter to, to a half a mile with these type of setups. So, and I get that with the TBS Crossfire and the DJI Vista unit. And I do recommend if you're gonna go with any type of DJI unit, you should consider TBS Crossfire just for peace of mind to get the range because I did have a near fail safe from a distance that I could not have achieved or achieved to retrieve this from if I did not have the TBS Crossfire. Uh, I went on the other side of the mountain and it completely froze, it pixelated, so I just punched the throttle up until I got visual and a TBS saved my quad. So do recommend TBS Crossfire. And what else? The board. Yeah, I guess we should go over the board, right? This board is the HGLRC uh, 35, Zeus 35 amp, and it's also the same board that I do have in my Sector 132 three inch. And like I said, it's a 35 amp board and it can handle 6S. So literally if I take these motors off and I put a 6S set of motors on it, I'd be good to go, but I don't want to do that right now. Maybe later, but right now I don't want to. So I do enjoy the flight times. I like the setup of it. I like how, how light it is. I mean, if you look around right now, the lightest ones that I've seen on uh, on most sites, like the Flywoo or something like that, that was at one, 367 grams, so that's pretty heavy, and it's a 6S, so add a 6S battery to that, then uh, yeah, you're looking at a, a pretty heavy quad. And I, like I said, I like the way this flies right now. There's a little bit of vibration and jello, and it's so easy to get rid of the jello. In another video, I'm gonna show you the difference between using a flying at normal, like stock, and then putting a cheap $5 ND8 filter on the front of the camera, and it just, for some reason, kills all jello like eliminates it, it's done so that's what i have guys uh, i'm also playing a video in the background because yeah, it's not a, a very interesting flight or exciting flight it's just cruising around i'm doing a test flight of it to make sure that everything is working okay and it is so over the weekend i'll possibly do some more videos with it and uh, we will do some more crazy acro and see if this frame and everything holds up because like i said i went with the wider wider arms and I can also pick up another frame if I want to for $27 instead of getting a, a more expensive brand and uh, breaking those arms I saw like I said last week and I saw a guy with a thick thick is like five millimeter arm or six it was super thick and it snapped and so it doesn't matter how how thick your your twig is if it's this thin and it's five millimeters no matter what it, it's gonna break you know? so Anyway, that's what I got for now, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed the flight as I was uh, showing you this. Like I said, it's, uh, I call it my Spidey because it's got the red and blue, uh, and, and it's a budget. I mean, I made this one literally $307 minus the receiver. So if you can do that, if you like building, if you're interested in the parts that I use, if you want links to them, they will not be affiliate links because I'm not an affiliate marketer. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'll post them or I'll put it in a comment section and that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed everything. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Sky Tiquati signing out.